Welcome to the 2015 Mayor's State of the City Luncheon. <laughs> Presented by the Evanston Chamber of Commerce. I'm Michael Kaur, the uh, President of the Board of the Chamber. It's great to see another sold out crowd. Thank you all for coming. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the elected officials and other dignitaries in the audience. The Honorable Mayor Elizabeth Tisdall. And the Honorable Mayor Lorraine Morton. State Representative Robin Gable. Alderman Judy Fisk, First Ward. Peter Brethway, Second Ward. Melissa Wynn, Third Ward. Don Wilson, Fourth Ward. Dolores Holmes, Fifth Ward. Mark Tendum, 6th Ward. Jane Grover, 7th Ward. Ann Rainey, 8th Ward. And Colleen Burris, 9th Ward. City Manager, Wally Bobkowitz. President of Northwestern University, Morton Shapiro. Yeah. President of Oakton Community College, Margaret Lee. Yeah. ETHS District's 202 Superintendent, Eric Witherspoon. Yeah. Evanston Skokie School District 65 Superintendent, Paul Gorin. Executive Director of Cradle to Career, Mary Sh Sheila. <laughs> General Secretary, Rotary International, John Huco. <laughs> and Police Chief of Evanston Police Department, Richard Dunnington. <laughs> I'd also like to acknowledge the Chamber Board of Directors, uh, past President Rebecca Burnick, Office Heads. <laughs> President-elect Jim Pipa, Cordy Brown. Uh, Treasurer Ingrid Stafford, Northwestern University. Gabrielle Cummings, North Shore University Health Systems. David Kane, Mather Lifeways. Alex Nobby, Hilton Orrington. Thank you for your hospitality, everything is great. Dick Peach, Dempster Auto Rebuilders. Robert Reese, Reese Insurance and Financial Services. Steve Routberg, Rotary International. Barbara Schwarz, Nature's Perspective Landscaping. Karen Singer, YWCA, Evanston North Shore. Malik Turley, Hip Circle Studio. And Miguel Wong, CoLab. I'd also like to acknowledge the City of Evanston staff who does such a great job for our community. As well as everybody else in the audience. For those of, us who, of you who have seen the Chamber's inaugural Evanston100.com website, then you already know what the Chamber thinks of the state of the city. There you'll find a list of 100 of the best stories about Evanston published throughout the year in 2014. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend you take a look. Many of you are likely represented in one way or the other. In addition, there's a link at the bottom of the site for if you see any stories that you'd like uh, to have considered for 2015. The agenda for today's evening includes a word from our presenting sponsor, North Shore University Health Systems, the Mayor's State of the City Address, 
and a presentation of the Evanston Art Council's Arts and Business Leadership Awards. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Gabrielle Cummins, a fellow Chamber of Commerce board member who will speak on behalf of our presenting sponsor, North Shore University Health Systems. Good afternoon, how are you doing today? Everybody doing good? I thought at first that March Madness was only related to basketball, but I now realize it's related to Chicago and the Chicagoland area weather. Who believes we have 70 degrees one day and then 30 degrees another? Um, good afternoon, and welcome to the 2015 State of the City Luncheon. My name is Gabrielle Cummings, and I am Senior Vice President at North Shore University Health Systems, Evanston Hospital. North Shore University Health System is proud to serve as a sponsor of this event for the seventh straight year. We want to thank Elaine from the Irish and her team at the Chamber for putting on this great event each year. As a Chamber member, Evanston Hospital values the important role the Chamber plays in the community and its contribution to promoting local businesses. I, along with my North Shore colleagues, am proud of our role in the community, providing medical care to just over 663,000 patients, with nearly 256,000 of those patients being cared for at Evanston Hospital. In 2015, we provided $283 million in community benefits with $24 million in free care, free and discounted care to those in financial need. Providing a community benefit is critical to our role in Evanston and dovetails into our responsibility to support the civic and economic vitality of the city. We know that hospitals serve as an economic engine to the communities they serve, generating jobs and increased incomes to the city. We are proud that of the 4,000 employees that work at Evanston Hospital, 800 of them live in Evanston, reinforcing our goal to support Evanston's economic vitality. In an effort to continue fueling the economic engine of Evanston, fostering partnerships to promote better care is key to what we do. To better service the growing Medicaid population, we've worked with the Erie Evanston Skokie Health Center, Lake County Health Department, and Vista Health System to create community care partners. In addition, we work closely with the local fire departments to provide training on topics focused on responding to emergent deliveries and cardiac arrests, training close to 60 firefighters and EMTs this year. Our commitment to the community is also valued by our clinicians, exemplified by Dr. Tim Sanborn, who's a cardiologist, who work with the city to make Evanston a Tobacco 21 community, meaning no one can purchase or sell tobacco unless they are 21 years or older. As you look at the year ahead, we are excited about many new and cutting edge services. North Shore is getting personal about your healthcare in ways that will forever change how we predict, prevent, and track disease through our new Center for Personalized Medicine. North Shore is also making large strides in the digital healthcare front, being one of the first organizations to implement the ability to schedule online appointments for primary care physicians, GI and radiology procedures. And as always, Evanston Hospital is in the midst of a multi-year construction project that includes a new state-of-the-art laboratory, an improved emergency department, and a renovated outpatient pharmacy. There are many new and exciting partnerships that we look forward to in the coming year. The first of which is the merger between North Shore and Advocate, which is awaiting Federal Trade Commission approval. If approved, the merger will create Advocate North Shore Health Partners, which will be the largest integrated healthcare delivery system in the state of Illinois, and the 11th largest not-for-profit healthcare system in the United States, serving nearly 3 million patients annually. We are proud to continue our ongoing relationship between North Shore University Health System and the Mayo Clinic, where North Shore physicians have direct access to Mayo Clinic physicians to collaborate on the best treatment plan for patients' clinical conditions. We are also in the sixth year of a partnership with the University of Chicago, Pritzker School of Medicine, sharing a commitment to medical education, clinical investigation, and excellent patient care. We're extremely proud of the important relationships we've developed and will continue to foster with local agencies, many of whom, of whom are here with us today. In particular, the Erie Evanston Skokie Health Center, the local fire and police departments, and Evanston Township High School, where we have a health center who cared for 800 students last year, representing over 3,100 patient encounters. In closing, I'd like to thank and congratulate all of the chamber members for your contribution in making Evanston a great place to live and work. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce a leader who works tirelessly on behalf of all of Evanston, our mayor, Elizabeth Tisdall.
thank you all. There's good news. There's good news about economic development, good news about Northwestern University. No, I take that back. There's great news about Northwestern University. And because of it, the president is here, even though the women's basketball team is in the playoffs and they're up by how much more? Five. Five. <laughs> There's good news about pension funding, the arts, the environment, and water sales. Before you all start dreaming about what to do with the extra money you'll have when your taxes are lowered, uh, forget about it. <laughs> As you know, the state of Illinois is in terrible financial condition. I just got back from Springfield and it's worse than I thought. It's imploding. The new word is sweeping. It conjures up comforting images of your grandmother sweeping the floor. That's not it. It means taking money you were promised and sweep, and it's gone. There are other words for that than sweeping, but I'm not going to use them here today. <laughs> the governor is 26, and that's only for 2015. That's the, the money that they're short for this year's budget. The governor's 2016 budget proposes cutting the local government distributive fund by 50%. That would cost Evanston $3,750,000. Cuts are being proposed for ETHS that I think Eric said would uh, cost about $4 million. I didn't want to know the bad news about District 65, but I saw Paul Gorin here and I asked him and that was a big mistake because he said seven million and then he said, oh no, if you add in everything it would be 10 million. Uh, connections for the homeless told me they could lose 300,000. It did not go well in Springfield when I pled our case and I think we have to look at this both as the way that District 65 would lose their amount, the high school would lose theirs, but we have to look at what the whole city would lose and I think we have to present that case in Springfield. So come to Evanston Day in Springfield, April 14th. Let's convince everyone there are better ways to solve the state's fiscal crisis. The Civic Federation plan is a great example. Now what are we doing to help ourselves? The economic development team's goals are to attract and retain businesses in Evanston. With 43 businesses opening, and 19 closing, our efforts are producing gains. The 43 businesses bring a total of 212 new full-time jobs. And Evanston is a great place to invest with over 370 million in construction spending and vacancy rates that are lower than Chicago or the North Shore. As for retention, Ermco, Evanston's oldest manufacturing business, turned 101. William Shoes, 61, a family bakery, Tags, celebrated 78 years in Evanston, Benison's Bakery, 76, Goods, 112 years. These are examples of a long history of a thriving, eclectic business community. Another example of business retention is ZS Associates. ZS is staying in Evanston where it belongs. Keeping business... Keeping businesses begun by Northwestern University professors or students in Evanston after they outgrow and use available space is an important part of our economic development strategy. ZS is a perfect example, founded in 1983 by two PhDs who were teaching at Northwestern. ZS has grown into one of the world's leading sales and marketing consulting firms, employing approximately 4,000 people globally, with 325 in Evanston. These 325 employees shop and eat in Evanston during the work week. Many of the 4,000 employees and their clients travel to Evanston for company meetings, which generates 5,000 room nights in our Evanston hotels. Thanks to NU reducing the termination fee by a half a million dollars and financial assistance from the city of Evanston, ZS will be leasing 47,000 square feet in the Rotary Building. 
ZS will benefit from Rotary International state-of-the-art conferencing with foreign language translation capabilities. It's a win for Evanston, for Northwestern, for Rotary International, and ZS. The ever-controversial peckish pig on Howard Street in Evanston won a delicious destination by the Illinois Office of Tourism, Try the Chocolate. Peckish Pig is among a select group of Illinois establishments to win the award, and the first in the North Shore. Combined with Ward 8's nomination last year as one of the best new wine and cocktail bars in the Chicago area, there's proof that well-spent economic development money can change a neighborhood by filling it with fun, pride, and a sense of community. Congratulations, Alderman Rainey. And congratulations, Alderman Holmes. The Gibbs Morrison Cultural Center will be a game changer on Church Street, similar to the changes on Howard. All of these stories and many more created an unemployment rate in December 2014 of 4.2% in Evanston compared to Chicago's 5.7% and the country's 54 Jobs provide a stronger tax base and a way to retain diversity in Evanston. Jobs fight homelessness. Jobs are critical to making Evanston what we all want our city to be. People ask me, what are we going to do about Ferguson? We are not Ferguson. We are absolutely, positively not Ferguson. Our faith community would not let us be Ferguson. Mayor Morton, who is here today, would not let us be Ferguson. Our police department would not let us be Ferguson. Our residents, our Human Relations Commission, our City Council, our Civil Service Commission, Chief Eddington, and all of you in the audience today, you would not let us be Ferguson. Our excellent police department reflects the diversity in our community. There is ongoing diversity training for our officers. More diversity training is planned to help the community understand the decisions an officer must be prepared to make. The Evanston Police Department runs a Citizens Police Academy. Officers coach Fellowship of African American Men basketball teams. They coach the one, Chief Eddington, that beat my grandson's team in the championship. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention that. They go to ward meetings. They are active and visible in the community. We are not Ferguson. In May of 2014, Detective Ostap, who is assigned to the Juvenile Bureau, responded to a report of persons shot in Elks Park. She came upon a male subject who had been shot multiple times with a large, gaping wound to his back. The subject began going into shock and was bleeding profusely. Detective Ostap used her training and took immediate action to stop the bleeding. She maintained pressure on the wound until Evanston Life, Fire and Life Safety Services paramedics arrived and were able to stabilize the individual. She remained with the subject all the way to the hospital. Detective Ostap is ASIS Illinois North Shore Chapters Officer of the Year for, I quote, exhibiting exceptional courage without thought of her personal safety to protect human life. End quote. We have a talented, dedicated police department working to keep us safe. We are not Ferguson. So how are we doing? After years of decreases, crime statistics are relatively stable with one notable exception, crimes against persons, homicide, DSA, robbery, aggravated battery, and arson are down 20.8%. There was one homicide in 2014 compared to four in 2013. In the midst of this one horrific tragedy, there was courage, grace, and wisdom shown. Albert Norman was killed at the beginning of the summer. Alderman Holmes and I paid a condolence call on his mother, Mrs. Norman, who told me how hurt she was by terrible things that were being said about Albert on the internet. 
That's where a lot of these feuds and shootings originate. In spite of this, she told her family and her extended family that they could not respond. That helped de-escalate the conflict. When I spoke with the extended family, teenage nieces and cousins all said they were honoring Mrs. Norman's wishes, but it was hard. A homicide at the beginning of the summer is likely to be the harbinger of a violent time for a city, but this was not. I give credit to excellent police work, excellent work by our clergy, outreach workers, the mayor's summer youth employment program, but most of all, I credit the Norman family's decision to stay off the internet. I'm glad to have a public occasion in which I can thank them all. It's helpful to see how things change over time. How did the city of Evanston go from 160 summer jobs in 2012 to 500 plus jobs in 2014? The answer is, we had to. The line of teenagers waiting to interview for the mayor's summer youth employment jobs stretched around the parking lot at City Hall, and it can be really cold in April. Inside, there were staff members from the Youth Job Center to teach interviewing skills and emphasize you have 10 seconds to make a first impression. It's great information and training, but the impression most of our kids came away with and we're talking about guys, some of whom were in suits and ties. Okay, not all of them were in suits and ties, but some of them were. They were all great kids, and the impression most of them came away with is they did not get jobs. There were over 500 applicants and 160 jobs in 2012. We had to do better, and we did. We developed a plan to obtain more jobs. The plan was so detailed it even included print communication on water bill envelopes. When we use water bill envelopes, you know we are going all out. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in it for you, the private employers? The city pays 50% of the student's salary. Our young people are awesome employees. You will be praised by tweets, Facebook, web pages, e-newsletters, lots of e-newsletters. If you cannot hire someone for the summer, we have all sorts of fabulous sponsorship opportunities for you. Information is on your table. The results in 2014, a 307% increase in jobs from 2012, a 200% increase in private employers and community partners. $500,000 in local, state, and federal grants to help subsidize the 50-50 program, and an award from the U.S. Conference of Mayors, first place for a small city. What does the future hold? Northwestern has promised 10 jobs next year. ZS promised five. Great America is hiring. Are they here? Great America is supposed to be here. Ah, there they are. They promised hundreds of, was it thousands of jobs? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Staff set a goal of 600 jobs. Why is it so important? One young man asked to have his summer job extended to be year round. He had been shot in a gang altercation in the spring and wanted to be able to continue to tell his friends he could not hang out with them because he had to be at work. He got the job, and now he hangs out with the people at Public Works. On any given day, he has between 10 and 30 adults asking if his homework is done. <laughs> he is making straight A's and talking about going to college. Our director of Public Works won the 2015 Community Involvement Award from both the American Public Works Association Suburban Branch and the Metro Chicago Chapter, which is no surprise. Congratulations, Director Robinson. There's good news about water sales. Des Plaines has signed an agreement with the Nor Northwest Water Commission and should begin receiving water in the third quarter of 2015. As a result, Evanston will be providing the commission with more water. Once this additional water supply begins, Evanston should realize approximately 575,000 in additional revenue annually. Discussions continue with Lincolnwood, Niles, Morton Grove, and Park Ridge. 
Discussions also continue with the Northwest Water Commission and the Northwest Suburban Municipal Joint Action Water Agency, JAWA. JAWA is considering joining with the commission to build a large transmission main to Evanston for the purchase of water. They will make a decision during the third quarter of 2015. Stay tuned, folks. September 30th, 2010 is a critical date in Evanston's history. In 2010, our police pension fund was 41.51% funded, and the firefighters' pension fund was 40.17%. I was told that once pensions landed in the 30th percentile, there was no hope for recovery. On September 30th, Joshua Rao, Northwestern University's hip young professor, the New York Times and Wall Street Journal's go-to guy, guru of police and fire pension wisdom, came to speak to the Evanston City Council. We have a great city council. We really do. People listen carefully and everyone listened very carefully to Mr. Rao. We followed his advice. In 2014, the Firefighters Fund was 48.53% funded. Police were at 4852 but that's only part of the story. The assumed rates of return on investment was reduced from 7% to 6.5% for both police and fire. As assumed rates go down, unfunded liabilities increase. Reducing assumed rates is good budgeting, but it's a tough decision to make. Our pensions are in much better shape, thanks to excellent aldermen and thanks to Mr. Rao. No, they are not in good shape, but they will be. Our commitment to fighting climate change continues. We are the World Wildlife Fund's 2015 Earth Hour Capital City. I am looking forward to going to South Korea and meeting with leaders from across the globe to learn about their green efforts. In 2014, our reduced emissions were equivalent to taking 19,000 cars off the road. In 2015, we need your help with two things. First, work with Citizens for a Greener Evanston and Elevate Energy to get an energy assessment, retrofit your building, and save money. Second, last summer we surveyed residents to learn how we could better prioritize investments in transit. One of the top suggestions was expanding the hours for the Purple Line Express. As a result, the CTA will test late express train service in May and June. Please ride the train, then we'll get to keep it. <laughs> the City Council promises to reduce our emissions 20% by 2016. The city's draft consolidated plan for 2015 to 19 says, I quote, housing affordability is expected to diminish in Evanston based on consistent increases in both property values and rents and no foreseeable decline in the immediate future or longer term. Evanston's low and moderate income population will continue to be priced out of their community as home prices and rental rates rise. End quote. Section 8 vouchers have helped maintain socioeconomic diversity in Evanston. We've gone from 982 voucher holders in 2003 to 656 in 2014. The decline of Section 8 vouchers in Evanston is due in part <coughs> To rising rents. Who are we? The percent of Evanston residents living below the poverty line increased from 9.7% in the 2005 to 2009 American Community Survey to 12.9% in the 2009 to 2013 survey. Households that pay more than 30% of their gross income for housing are considered cost burdened and those that pay more than 50% are severely housing cost burdened. 42.8% of all households in Evanston are considered housing cost burdened. That represents a large number of people who love Evanston and are sacrificing a great deal to stay here. Amendments to strengthen the inclusionary housing ordinance could slow the loss of affordable housing, but the gains would be minimal. 
We must look at zoning. Micro units are being tried in other cities. Jobs are part of the answer. Who are we is one question that's easily answered. Who do we want to be is the harder question, and what will we do to make that happen? On March 18, 2014, the voters of Evanston Township decided to dissolve the Township of Evanston. This was only the third time in Illinois history, and the first time since 1932, that voters have decided to dissolve a township. On May 1st, responsibilities for general assistance and emergency programs transferred to the city's health department and responsibility for property tax assessment advising services transferred to the city's administrative services department. While Evanston Township was dissolved, the commitment of the city of Evanston to help those in need continues. The following services were added to those that were already being provided. Enrollment with the Affordable Care Act, receipt of Evanston Public Library cards with the waiving of outstanding fees, a homeless management information system license designed to better case manage homeless participants, a partnership with Presence Behavioral Health for intense case managing for mental health crisis treatment, there is increased assistance with workforce development, and there is outreach for at-risk individuals who need substance abuse treatment. The financial benefits are impressive. The City of Evanston received $26,908 for clients eligible for Social Security benefits. We saved an additional $300,000 in pharmaceutical purchases. Instead of paying for medications at cost, we are now paying the Medicaid reimbursement rate between $2 to $5 per prescription. Congratulations to the Health Department. So what is the state of the city? There is no truth to the rumor that we are the fifth best city. We are the best. We are listed in the top 10 downtowns. We are one of the 10 most exciting places in Illinois. We are an Earth Hour winner. The press is asking, when did Evanston get hip? We've been hip for a long time. The question is, what took the press so long to figure it out? <laughs> Gentrification, crime, climate change, the state of Illinois' finances, infrastructure, economic development. If you want challenges, we have plenty. My message is, we are working on them. We have extraordinarily talented residents, aldermen, and city staff. We have an extraordinary university helping us with jobs, business retention, advice on pensions, water sales, etc. President Shapiro, who's here in spite of the uh, women's basketball team, and I, I know that's difficult and I greatly appreciate it. Um, President Shapiro and I have an announcement to make. Northwestern University agrees to donate $1 million annually to the city of Evanston for the city's Good Neighbor Fund for a period of five years. Proceeds from this donation shall be spent on projects and services agreed to jointly by the Mayor of Evanston and the Northwestern University President. Every July 1st, the Mayor will develop a list of projects and services to be eligible for funding. The Mayor and President will review the list and agree on, pro on a project and issues to be funded for the 12-month period beginning September 1st. The City of Evanston will create a Good Neighbor Fund where the annual payment will be dis deposited. Eligible projects and services will include capital projects supporting city infrastructure and facilities, specific support for existing city services, and special projects. Northwestern University, our businesses, residents of Evanston, our schools and not-for-profits our full partners in making the state of this city great. So I say to you with confidence, 
that we can and we will solve our challenges. Thank you very much. Please come up, Penny, Paul, Margaret, and Victoria. Take it away, folks. Rothheiser and Paul Giddings and I have co-chaired the Arts and Business Committee of the Arts Council and you've seen us before we come here every year and this is actually a good job because we get to give out awards and this is actually our eighth year doing this particular award. Can you hear me? I don't know if this yes? Okay. This is the Arts and Business Committee's leadership award and we do this to honor those businesses that have stepped up, gone the extra mile to support the arts in whatever way they can. Some do it through sponsorships, some do it in in-kind donations, other people have a lot of money to throw at it, we love that. So you can, you can support the arts in any way that you're able to. Every year we commission a local artist to create this award. And Alfonso, Alfonso, stand up. Alfonso Peloto Nieves Ruiz, <laughs> who, who he created last year's award, and we asked him again to create this year's award. He was born in Mexico, but he's ours now. He's a sculptor and, and art instructor in town. This year we're honoring two businesses. This is the first time we've ever given out two awards in one year, one to a larger business, one to a smaller, because it really doesn't matter what size the business is, you can all support the arts in some manner. And we just had so many good candidates that we decided to do too. So we're just gonna do it alphabetically. First award's going to Allegro Dance Boutique. This store, I don't know if you know the store on Central Street. They call themselves the store for dancers by dancers. That's because this is more than a place to buy dancewear. Owner Victoria Lyman has created a world for dancers. The shop has become a source of information about dance, local dance schools and events, and offers information and guidance to families. The boutique actively promotes our local dance companies creates partnerships with dance schools and troops, offers discounted merchandise to local dancers. They've got an apprentice program that gives jobs to, job experience to dancers. And they're a sponsor of the Evanston Dance, and seasons as a sponsor of the Evanston Dance Ensemble in Victoria, who is a professional dancer, serves on the board of the Evanston Dance Ensemble. The award that Peloto created is called We Are In Movement. He says, for our Native American ancestors, dance was, and still is, a way to be in harmony and balance with the universe. So I'm presenting the award to Victoria Lyman, owner, owner of the boutique. Yes, I love it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, thank you to the, uh, thank you so much for the award. We're so excited at Allegro. Uh, I started taking the train to Evanston when I was eight years old because my mom couldn't find good enough dance classes where we lived, and I've sort of never left since. I trained at the Evanston School of Ballet till I went to college, and then found myself right back on Central Street after college working at a little dance shop. I eventually bought that dance store thinking, 
Wouldn't it be cool if we could have a store that serves the local dance community and then gives right back to that same community? So that's what we're doing now. We love it. I didn't get into it because I love selling tights. Tights and leotards can only be so interesting. I, I got into it because I love dance and I value the role of the arts in our community. Uh, one of our core values is to champion the arts and the artists and it's cool to be recognized for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bea Rashid from the Evanston Dance Ensemble and Dance Center Evanston. Thank you to the Evanston Arts and Business Council, uh, to my fabulous staff, my boyfriend, my parents, our customers, and to Evanston. Glad to be here. I think you could all see that dancing is good for you. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to take it up, but uh, fantastic. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank very quickly the Chamber, the Mayor, for allowing us to do this. It's fantastic because the business community and the arts community are working closely together to make a successful Evanston and that contributes to our better place to work and live. So thank you very much. The second award uh, goes to a, an organization that's been around a long time. Our Rotary Club uh, started meeting there in 1919 at the old North Shore Hotel and have been there ever since until the North Shore Hotel became the Marion. And if you are, I'm sure you all are aware, what a remarkable job the Horizon Company and the Marion have done to make that place just magnificent. And there's more additions going on and so forth. So it's fantastic. And while all this has happened, they still support the arts. I will just explain to you what they've been doing. For example, they uh, have supported the Evanston Symphony Orchestra over the years. They have uh, hosted ESO concerts, major advertiser for ESO. They, uh, they hold an opera idol program where the kids come in and sing and they, they have winners and post their, their pictures. They donate rehearsal uh, studios, advertising dollars to Savoy Affairs and Light Opera Works and they participated in our Art Under Glass. And accepting the award today for this great organization is Margaret Gergen. Margaret has been with the North Shore, now Marion, for 22 years. And she is absolutely magnificent. So if you haven't been over there, they have a wonderful lounge now. It looks beautiful. Go there and support them because they are a big supporter of the arts. So congratulations to you. I'm giving this uh, trophy from Palato, and it's, it's called, uh, I have to read this because it's Yo, Yo, Yo Locali. I'm pretty good at these foreign things. Uh, it's, uh, it means, in, uh, it means heart house. And as you can see, it's, it's a hand holding a building and it's a house and that's what the Marion is, is a house. And I think it's just remarkable he was able to do that. And it, uh, the heart house is a, comes from a Nahuatl language in central Mexico, but that's all I know about it. So anyway, <laughs> here you are, Margaret, and thank you very much. Thank you, Palato, that's beautiful. Thank you to the Arts Council. We are very pleased to receive this award. It is um, a double pleasure because our efforts to support the arts bring great pleasure to our residents, to the community that we invite to share the benefit of those programs. Um, last night was our third round of our Opera Idol competition and um, the young people who were there just filled our ballroom with wonderful music, great energy, lots of talent and being able to share that with them, with our residents and with all of you as part of the community is a real thrill for us um, to be recognized for it makes it even sweeter. So thank you so much.
Again, thank you very much. And one last thing, if you see one of these decals on a window in a business around Evanston, it's because they've won our award. They support the arts. Support them with your business. Thank you very much. <laughs>